the 12th regular meeting of the 2017-2018 Common Council to order. Will the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. Knowledge is knowing a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it into a fruit salad. Thank you very much. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll. There are 12 present. Okay, Alderperson Marcus Savalio, Andy Schneider, John Bellinger, and Mike Damro are all excused this evening. Next, we'll move on to the presentation of the colors by Boy Scout Troop 890 and 804 from St. Clements and Holy Family Parishes. Uh, Evan Heslink and J.T. Rowley will be uh, bringing the colors up. Please proceed, gentlemen. Stand. <laughs> Gentlemen, you want to come back up and you can lead us in the pledge then? There's a microphone right there. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As an American, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, and to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Scout law. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Be prepared. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have a, a program on Boy Scout Day, which is coming up soon by Chris Weber, the BSA Boy Scout Council District Director. Chris, please come forward. All right. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council, for uh, giving me the chance uh, to come up here and speak to you tonight um, to talk a little bit about our local um, scouting units, and then also a big event we have coming up this Saturday uh, in the city of Sheboygan. Um, to start out, my again, my name is Chris Weber. I'm the district director of the Lakeshore District. Um, our district is part of the Bay Lakes Council, which is one of the hundred councils, um, hundreds of councils um, across the United States. Now, we make up Manitowoc, Sheboygan, and Calumet counties. We serve just under 2,500 young people, and we have 75 scouting units in that three county area. 21 of which uh, come from the city of Sheboygan. Now, we serve boys all the way um, from kindergarten all the way up until they're um, 21 years of age um, through three different um, stages of the program. We have Cub Scouting, Boy Scouting, Venturing, Exploring, and Sea Scouts is kind of that last stage all meshed together. So a number of opportunities for our young people to experience and learn some skills, values that uh, you know, they might not come across, and definitely in different settings as well. We are uh, a volunteer-driven organization. We uh, rely on our great volunteers to provide an excellent program for, my, uh, for our boys. And uh, that's what uh, we're here to promote tonight. We are trying to uh, get some excitement around an event we brought back last year, Sheboygan Scout Day. Now, in the past, we would uh, have all of our troops, packs, and crews in the city get together for a one-day event to promote scouting. And that's what we're doing this Saturday at Deland Park. Um, we are gonna have our packs there showcasing what they do best. We're gonna have mock campsites, cooking, we're gonna have um, Pinewood Derby, Rain Gutter Regatta, and a number of other events to show what scouts do best in the community. Uh, the public's been invited, we've been flyering all the schools, we've been promoting it on social media, and we've been um, talking about it at our different meetings uh, in the community and uh, online as well. Um, it's gonna be a really great experience. We're gonna start the day off at 10 a.m. and it's gonna run until 4 p.m. 
Um, again, it's open to families, young and old, and uh, it's gonna be a great time for all. Do we have any questions? Anyone? What time does it start? It's gonna start at 10 a.m. on Saturday at the Land Park. It's gonna run until four. Um, we have Boy Scout troops, Cub Scout packs. Um, they're gonna be doing a number of different events throughout the day, like I said, cooking. Um, we're gonna have uh, different skills that the scouts have been practicing, different knots. We're gonna have a rope bridge, um, and a number of different things for, for folks in the community to come out and do, so. Alder person born, did you have a question? No, I didn't. Okay, well thank you very much for your presentation today and uh, good luck with the event this weekend. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to approval of the minutes from our last uh, council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next uh, is the mayor's appointments for the King Park neighborhood. City attorney. We have uh, two appointments, one primary, one alternate. The primary is Scott Hansen. Uh, the alternate is Grazia Perella, appointed uh, September 18, 2017 for the term to expire April 30, 2018. And those appointments will lie over till our next meeting. Next is uh, public forum, city clerk. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, we have one person this evening, Dulcie Johnson. Dulcie, if you could come up, please. Delcy, I need your home address. 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Thank you, and you will have five minutes. I'm here to present my annual State of the City's Ambulance Service. Based on data received in an FOIA request to Finance Director Nancy Buss for expenses and revenues related to the operation of the ambulance service in 2016. For those who are new to the council, I will explain in detail how I have arrived at my conclusions. I have rounded the figures. Operating three ambulances 24-7 requires 21 firemen, but the ambulance budget only includes salaries and benefits for the four newest hires. Salaries and benefits for the four firemen was $346,000. Using that as a base, Salaries and benefits for 17 additional firemen would be $1,472,000. EMS calls accounted for 78% of the incidents that the department responded to. 78% of $1,472,000 is $1,148,000. Total expenses were $1,762,000. This includes 106,000 for leasing the ambulances and 77,000 for contracted billing services. Total billings were 3,062,000. Actual collections were $903,000 or 29% of billings. That means your constituents subsidize 71% of the ambulances for city and non-city users. Your constituents never paid a subsidy to Orange Cross. Orange Cross absorbed the loss. Subtracting expenses from revenues results in a loss of $860,000. The loss would be much greater if administrative costs and the higher salary and benefit costs for the 17 additional firemen were included. The amount calculated for the firemen is based on the salary and benefits of $87,000 each for the, new four, for the four newest hires, an increase of $7,000 per hire. However, the average salary and benefits for the 17 additional longer serving firemen would be higher. Also, the figures do not include any administrative costs. It takes more than four firemen and an ambulance to operate the service. Deputy Chief Butler was hired late in 27 to run the ambulance service, but his salary and benefits are not included in the ambulance budget. I did not seek salary and benefit figures for any administrative personnel. But if those costs and the higher salaries and benefits for the 17 firemen were added, the actual cost of providing the ambulance service would be much higher and the loss much greater. 
At the time the city, the city decided to take over the ambulance service, a story in the Sheboygan Press on May 30th, 2007 noted, and I quote, if the service loses money, city fire officials will cut the department's budget to make up for the loss, end of quote. Of course, it's easier to avoid that situation when you don't include all your expenses. In 2016, the department responded to 61 building fires with five stations, that's one call per station per month or 1% of the incidents. Given that, it is hard to justify the department plan to add six more firefighters in the next two years. As the Fitch and Associates representative pointed out at the Committee of the Whole meeting, the council needs to decide how to balance the risk with the taxpayer's capacity to pay for protection. Whenever there is discussion of changing the number of firemen or stations, the union's mantra is always, minutes matter. But half of the firemen do not live in the city and depend on volunteers to protect their families and property. Evidently, minutes don't matter if you're a fireman living outside the city. I keep repeating this because no one has ever been able to explain this to me. When the department took over the ambulance service in 27, 2007, Corey Bauck had just been elected to the council. His home was on the alleged walking quorum path. He was cooking out in his backyard when he was approached by then Mayor Perez, then Chief Latowski, and I believe Alderman Gisha and Hannah, seeking his endorsement of the city assuming the ambulance service from Orange Cross. The plan was to suspend the rules and vote on it at the very first council meeting without any knowledge or input from the citizens. As it turned out, the public became aware and the vote was postponed to allow some time for citizen input. I was disappointed that Alderman Bauck voted in, in favor of the change. I had campaigned for him because I thought he would be a good addition to the council. Excuse me, Dulcie, your time is up. Can I have an extra minute? <clears throat> Please finish. He and I had many discussions about the ambulance service. One of them landed on the front page of the press. When he left the council a few years ago, I was very surprised when he said to me, I was wrong. I should never have voted for the ambulance service. Thank you. Thank you, Dulcie. That's it for public forum. Thank you very much. Next, we'll move on to our presentation. The city recently received a special citation from the Government Finance Officers Association, and it reads, Distinguished Budget Presentation Award presented to the City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin for the fiscal year beginning January 1st of 2017 uh, the Executive Director, Christopher Morell. So I present this to uh, Administrator Hofflin on behalf of the work that he and all of the staff, the, both the managers and the department heads did in putting that budget together. Congratulations. And they also included a certificate of recognition for budget preparation to Daryl Hoffland. I also give that to Daryl as well. And he's going to give us a, a little bit of a, an, an idea of, of what this all means and what they had to go through. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as part of the Government Finance Officers Distinguished Budget Award, uh, they consider this a significant achievement for any entity. Uh, in addition to local governments, counties, school districts, technical colleges, uh, state governments uh, are eligible for consideration. It reflects the commitment of a governing body and staff to meeting the highest principles in government budgeting. In order to receive the award, the entity has to satisfy national recognized guidelines for effective budget presentations. These include policy development, a financial plan, an operations guide, and finally, a communication device. Uh, budget uh, documents must be rated proficient in all four categories and in 14 mandatory criteria within those categories to receive the award. In the state of Wisconsin, 19 municipalities have received this award uh, in, in the last year. Uh, as I mentioned, other government agencies are also eligible. In Sheboygan County, 
Uh, in addition now to the city of Sheboygan, uh, LTC is the only other government agency that has been recognized by uh, Government Finance Officers Association. As uh, Mayor Mike identified, uh, a lot of work w went into this for the 2016 budget, 2017 budget, um, especially uh, our Director of Finance, uh, Nancy Buss. Uh, and, uh, and again, an incredible amount of time, uh, effort on her part uh, in pulling this together. Uh, and again, I, I want to extend my appreciation for all her, her work. Uh, as, as recently as uh, the past two weeks, you received a copy of the 2018 version. Again, we tried to make some uh, improvements to again make it as user-friendly as possible in spite of the length of the document. But we tried to anticipate questions that you, the policymakers, have as well as what the citizens uh, would have as well. And again, we will continue to work on this budget document to make it uh, better every year. And again, we appreciate uh, all the contributions by city staff. Thank you very much. And then next we'll move on to mayor's announcements. Um, in addition to the uh, Boy Scout Day that's coming up this weekend, our Gateway Neighborhood Association is planning um, a Michigan Avenue block party on Sunday, October 1st from 11.30 to 4.30. And um, that'll be held in the, in the uh, uh, Michigan Avenue area. And then Esslingen Fest is coming up. Uh, it's a second annual event planned by the Mayor's International Committee. That'll be at Three Sheep's Tap Room on the same day, October 1st on Sunday from 11 till 4 o'clock. And then the next item, I'd just like to uh, make a uh, notice uh, announcement that the Board of Water Commissioners election will be held at our next council meeting on October 2nd. Anyone interested in this position can get your letter of interest uh, to Alderperson Wolf via the city clerk's office by September 26th. Next, we'll move on to our hearing scheduled. Uh, it's item 2.1, hearing number six, of 1718 pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices and sent by the city clerk is a hearing scheduled for this evening to amend the city's official zoning map to change the use district classification of property located at 2724 Kohler Memorial Drive from class suburban office SO to class urban residential UR. Hearing is now open. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Just raise your hand. Yes, sir. Please come forward. We'll need your name and address. Uh, I'm Wilson McAlpine. Uh, my address is 1137 North 28th Street. Thank you. I, I'm the property right to the north of the subject uh, rezoning thing. And I guess we just have questions. Of, uh, I understand there's an apartment <coughs> unit that is scheduled to go in there, and that's why we need the zoning change. It's, it's currently zoned commercial, and uh, this is to accommodate a uh, possible uh, apartment complex. So I, I, I guess my initial reaction is I'm leery of that, because what kind of residents are we talking here? Are we talking... Um, is it going to be subsidized housing? Is it going to be, uh, do we have uh, any kind of plans for? Um, when we get to the item on the agenda, we can have further discussion on that. Okay. So for right now, if you have any other questions or comments you'd like to make, this is the time to make those. Okay. Then that's, I just want to say we have concerns until we find out more about what the actual uh, apartment is going to look like. and. You know, just the, if it's a nice looking apartment, then probably wouldn't be an issue. But if it's going to be future slums of Sheboygan, then we don't want that. So, understood. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to uh, close the hearing. Second. Thank you for the motion and support. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 3.2 through 3.11. Alderperson Wolf. 
Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and, accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and Second. ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. We need to aye. Do a roll. Me? We need to do a roll. Oh, I'm sorry, we need to do a roll call. Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Next under communications, item 4.1 will be referred to the Public Works Committee. It was originally listed as Public Safety, but it's to Public Works Committee. And then moving on to reports of officers. Item 5.1 is RO number 162 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 15 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue and Ross, and RO number 146 of 1718 by the City Clerk to grant the privilege of encroachment upon described portions of Wisconsin Avenue located at 1331 Wisconsin Avenue in the City of Sheboygan for the purpose of installing and maintaining a private sewer that will tie into the public storm sewer within the right of way along the south side of Wisconsin Avenue and recommends passing the ordinance. Um, Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, file, and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank, thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all, and I have to call roll again. Eyes. Motion passes. Items 5.2 through 5.8 will be referred to various committees. Moving on to resolutions, item 6.1 will lie over, and items 6.2 and 6.3 will be referred to the Public Works Committee. Under reports of committees, Item 7.1 is RC number 115 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee, to whom is referred RO number 128 of 1718 by the City Clerk, submitting various license application and recommends denying beverage operator's license application 0977 uh, Eugene A. Ashbar. Uh, based on his record of violations related to the license activity, his record as a habitual law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Thank you for, the, thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, please proceed. Is Eugene Ashabar here? It doesn't appear Mr. Ashabar is here. Um, he was at our meeting too. Um, well, it would have been four weeks ago, and we had a discussion, and he was going to have his PO present a letter or in person at our last um, meeting of law and licensing, and no one showed up, nor, nor was any correspondence found. With his um, unavailability to work with our committee, it was um, voted that his license be denied. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.2 is RC number 117 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee, to whom is referred pursuant to RO number 140 of 1718 by the City Clerk, submitting various license applications and recommends denying beverage operators license application number 5247, Brandy J. Thomas. Based upon her record of violations related to the licensed activity, the record is a habitual law offender and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, please proceed. Is Brandy Thomas here? 
It doesn't appear that Brandy Thomas is here, nor did she show up to any of the community meetings and was not working with um, our fa their failure to cooperate with the committee, so it was um, decided to deny her license. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Question. 12 eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.3 is RC number 116 of 1718 by lawn licensing to whom is referred RO number 140 of 1718 by the city clerk submitting various license application and recommends denying taxicab license application number 1819. Thomas Holmes. Based upon his record of violations related to the licensed activity, his record as a habitual law offender and failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Please proceed. Is Mr. Thomas Holmes here? It doesn't appear that he is here this evening. He was um, <coughs> requested to come to our committee and didn't show up, and henceforth we all um, decided and agreed to deny his license for non-cooperation. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.4 is RC number 126 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom is referred resolution number 66 of 1617 by all the person Donahue and Boren, authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the complete demolition of the Sheboygan Municipal Auditorium and Armory, including restoration of the property as to so prepare it uh, the site for future development and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Uh, item 7.5 is RC number 125 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom is referred resolution uh, number 65 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue and Boren, authorizing establishing an appropriation in the 2017 budget for land improvements and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to um, uh, accept, uh, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.6 is RC number 123 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom is referred resolution number 64 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue and Boren, amending resolution number 93 of 1415, authorizing the city administrator to negotiate the settlement of certain liability claims and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderperson Donahue. I uh, move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Eleven eyes, one no. Motion passes. 
Item 7.7 .7 is a resolution, or rather RC number 124 of 1718 by Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred resolution number 63 of 1718 by Alder Person Donahue and Born, authorizing the appropriate city official to enter into an intergovernmental cooperative agreement with Sheboygan County for sales tax, revenue sharing for transportation infrastructure maintenance and recommends passing the resolution. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.8 is RC number 127 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom is referred by direct referral resolution number 61 of 1718 by all the person Donahue, Boren, and Wolf, accepting certain changes to the city's <coughs> medical benefit plan and dental benefit plan effective for calendar year 2018. Uh, coverage and establishing the monthly premium equivalent rates effective for January 2018 coverage and thereafter and recommends that the uh, attached substitute resolution be passed. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Advise. Motion passes. Item 7.9 is RC number 122 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee, to whom is referred resolution number 72 of 1718 by Alder Person Boren, Sorensen, Bellinger, and Nelson, directing the appropriate city officials to take steps to limit the use of Knollcrest Drive for the construction purposes during the time the State of Wisconsin Department of Transportation Utility Corridor Multi Use. Path State Project Number 4996-22-71 is in progress and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for the motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Boren. Nothing. Oh, okay. Is any other discussion? Okay, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> 12 eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.10 is RC number 128 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee to whom is referred General Ordinance number 17 of 1718 by Alder Person Wolf repealing General Ordinance number 21 of 17 of 7172 as to remove the one-way street designation for South Water Street between Virginia Avenue and New Jersey Avenue and for New Jersey Avenue between South A Street and South Water Street and recommends passing the ordinance. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass, pass ordinance. Second. <clears throat> Thank you for that motion and support. It's before you for discussion. Seeing no comments, please call the roll. Eleven eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 7.11 through 7.14, those will all be um, referred to the Committee of the Whole. 
Uh, moving on to ordinances. Uh, 8.1 will be referred to finance and personnel. And 8.2 will be referred to public safety committee. And moving on then to matters laid over. Item 9.1 is RO number 142 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 11 of 1718 by Alderperson Holshue and Schneider and RO number 77 of 1718 by City Clerk for uh, communication from acuity insurance submitting a petition for direct annexation by unanimous approval for certain lands currently located in the town of Sheboygan. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file and pass ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Twelve ayes. Motion passes. Item 9.2 is RO number 143 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred General Ordinance number 12 of 1718 by all persons Savalio and Lewandowski and RO number 139 of 1718 by the City Clerk to rezone property located at 2724 Kohler Memorial Drive from Class Suburban Office SO to Class Urban Residential UR. Uh, Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file and pass ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Boring. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, to answer the gentleman's question who spoke in the public forum, can you give us some direction on what type of housing that's going to be, market rate or subsidized? I'd like to call uh, Chad Pelichek up and he can give us a little background on that. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. This is the property, just so everybody knows, uh, that was the formal, formerly known as Nino's property on Kohler Memorial Drive. Um, the developer is proposing a market rate housing development, um, so it will not be subsidized. And to the gentleman in the back, it will not be the new slum of Sheboygan. It's a very high quality design project, and that's one of the reasons why city staff was in support of it. It's a very nice entrance uh, staple to our community along that major corridor. Um, from a parking standpoint, there's one parking stall per each one bedroom and two parking stalls per each two bedroom and guest parking in the center. So the intent is that the needs of the development will be handled, the parking needs of the development will be handled on site with underground parking as part of this. Um, I think it's uh, like I said, we're, we're excited about this opportunity. I think it poses a great opportunity for a different mix of uh, people in our market. And as you know, we continue to push down uh, the, the, the track of getting more rental units. And so these rental units will be of high quality finishes and design. Thank you, Chad. Uh, under further questions, Alderperson Lewandowski. Yes, I had a couple phone calls about this since it is in my district. And one of the phone calls was about parking, which Chad just answered. But another phone call was that they are against apartments being built there because they think that it's a prime commercial area being the entrance to the city. And they would like to see a restaurant or some other type of business there instead of an apartment building. Okay. Chad, did you want to comment on that? Because, um, you know, we, we have had it available, and, and uh, I know the property owner has marketed for quite some time with no uh, solid interest in, in those types of businesses. Yeah, that's correct. It's been on the market for a while as both a for sale for lease uh, has shown very little interest. And um, you know, I think the, the question is, is why apartments? I think there's uh, the opportunity for people that are working out either acuity or further out west to kind of leverage this location and not necessarily have the downtown location. So I think, you know, from a planning perception, we believe it works well into the uh, market. And, you know, it wasn't zoned, it was zoned suburban commercial. I mean, suburban office, it wasn't zoned for um, a commercial establishment under suburban commercial. So if it was commercial, it had to be rezoned anyway. Um, and it, it's the highest and best use, we believe, for uh, the, par the parcel, given the fact that we are in need of additional apartments. 
Thank you. Um, next is Alderperson Sorensen. I know we're getting a little off topic about, <clears throat> excuse me, rezoning, but I was wondering if there was a date kind of set for groundbreaking, whether if this was going to be next year or whatever. They the, have to the go topic. through the conditional use permit through the planning commission after this rezone, so we at that stage will understand what the timing is. I'm not able to answer that question as okay. of now. Thanks, Chad. Uh, Alderperson Duran. Actually, my point was answered uh, very nicely. I just want to confirm the communication about that. That spot was available for quite a while, and we did not really have anything developed there. So I'm, I'm for one, happy to see something of quality going in that spot. So good work. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just wondering, <laughs> perchance, in the agreement that we have with them, if we have an agreement with them, which maybe we won't have. We do not have a, de we will not have a developer's agreement as we're not providing any incentive in this deal. So the next step after the rezone is to work through the architectural review board and the planning commission for approval to build the building. Thank you. Uh, next is Alderperson Wolf. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chad, one, one more question. Um, I understand that we all like to see, you know, restaurants and things like that, like it, like it used to be and the property has been available for a very long time, but what's the estimated value of this pro project, would you, would you say, in your years of experience? How many units? The developer is in, I'd say, at least 10 million. Okay, and a restaurant typically would be under less. Under 3 million. Yes, thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Holshue. I'm sorry, I looked at the, uh, and I don't remember how many units is going. Are I going think it's 60, 60 right around one and two bedroom units. One and two bedroom units. Yes. 60 of them. Yes. Thank you. All the person born. My question was answered. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. If there's no more questions, so the clerk, please call the roll for passage. Advise. Motion passes. Item 9.3 is RO number 144 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission approving the proposed corrected amendment to the project plan of tax incremental district number 13 of the City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. I'd like to call up Chad to give us a little explanation on this. Thank you. So this is this was approved prior. This is TID 13. TID 13 encompasses an area around the Founders Club and the <coughs> Landmark Square Apartments. Um, in that uh, a month or two ago, uh, the council accepted this um, amendment to the district to provide a developer's incentives to the Founders Club for their phase two construction, as well as sharing excess revenue from the district with TID 16. After that was all uh, completed, we were advised by the state of Wisconsin Department of Revenue that we're unable to share with a different district. So TID 16 is set up as a mixed use district. This was set up as a blighted district and you can only share with a blighted district. So what we're doing is basically correcting the approval to continue to provide the uh, wherewithal to have the incentive in there for the Founders Club, but there will be no sharing with the TID 16, that part of it has been removed. So that's primarily the correction is just removing that sharing of funds with another district. Thank you, Chad. Uh, is there any other discussion on this motion? Thank you. So would the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Next is item 9.4, which is RO number 145 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission, approving the proposed corrected amendment to the project plan amendment for tax incremental district number 14, City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And again, I'd like to ask Chad to give us a brief explanation. 
So this is as it relates to TID 14. TID 14 encompasses primarily the festival foods area and the Taylor Drive <coughs> Shopping Center was put in place to provide incentives to tear down the old Walmart and build the new festival foods. What we're doing here is amending the territory boundaries of TID 14 to encompass the uh, Memorial Mall property or the new Meyer store and to provide the development incentive that this council has previously approved. The development incentive is a $1.6 million incentive pay as you go where they'll pay their taxes. A portion of their taxes will be paid back to them until that 1.6, 1.5 million, sorry, is, is um, it's 1.5, until that's met. The other piece of it is 1.5 million is being used to reconstruct uh, the entrance or, or the traffic lanes on Taylor Drive as part of this development. It's a TIF eligible expense. And then um, another 500,000 is set aside in there. If, if needed in the future, if there's some improvements that are needed for the off ramps at Taylor Drive and 23 as part of the, um, the new configuration and additional signals and those types of things as part of this development. So it's really to provide an incentive and make public infrastructure improvements and add this territory into the district. This has been approved by the Joint Review Board, which is all the taxing jurisdictions, as well as the Planning Commission. So now it's before you for approval. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion on this motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Item 9.6. Is uh, resolution number 62 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue authorizing a transfer of appropriate. Oh, back to one, 9.5. Uh, 9.5 is RC number 106 of 1718 by the Committee of the Whole, to whom is referred resolution number 30 by uh, Alderperson Bellinger authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract with prof for professional services related to the performance of an operational and departmental structure study for the Sheboygan Fire Department. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to, ooh, excuse me, I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that, uh, that motion and support. That's before us for discussion. Alderperson Lewandowski. Yes. Five weeks ago, City Administrator Daryl Huffman gave us the results of a 2017 citizen survey and how the city is doing. The survey showed that the top rated city department is the fire department. We also got a 26 page handout of comments. I read every one of 410 comments. A few comments were that we should spend money wisely and there is much, too much wasteful spending. Comment number 315 was, you are spending and wasting taxpayer money on all the wrong things. Fix the streets. Comment number 203 starts out, the mayor and city council need to do a better job at working with the police chief and the fire chief. Comment number 177 says, it appears common sense is nowhere to be found in city government. Tonight we will be voting voting on spending $58,000 to find out things the fire department is doing wrong, even though the people rated the fire department number one of all city departments. They are happy with the fire department as it is currently being run and don't see the need for a $58,000 study. Instead of spending $58,000 on what a department is doing right, how about spending $58,000 on departments that didn't make the top five or better yet, just skip all studies, which we ignore anyway, and put that $58,000 towards the roads like the people would want. By approving this $58,000 study, we will be spending it on the wrong things according to our taxpayers who supply the money. Instead, we will be wasting that money on a study that has been shot down two times in the past and is part of a witch hunt against the fire, de fire chief. And a witch hunt it is. According to one definition I found, witch hunt definition, the act of unfairly looking for and punishing people such as political opponents. Certainly we are unfairly looking for things wrong in the top rated city department, our fire department. Instead of a witch hunt against the chief, 
we should all be thanking him, the chief and all the members of the fire department for doing such a good job that the citizens of Sheboygan consider them the best department in the, our city. Voting in favor of this study will make us a council look like, look stupid and make our citizens ask, what were they thinking? <coughs> or maybe they were, will be thinking, what were, were they thinking? I ask my fellow common council members to vote against this and end this witch hunt for good. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Alder person Holshu. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm a bit concerned because um, I spent some time and I had come to find that the new aldermen that have been elected to term and are within our council now weren't even made aware of the fact that previous reports were given to all of the, the um, aldermen, nor were they provided any copies. So when bringing that forward, they made certain that the new aldermen did get copies of this report. What I don't understand is why are we going after one single department? Are we preparing ourselves to go after every single department now? Um, the fire department has been doing a fantastic job. They are, as most of our departments, have been cut, and so they don't have all the people that they do need. The ambulance service is the one service that does bring revenue to our city. Um, according to the survey that was sent out, the fire department was one of, amongst the leading um, things that the people in the city of Sheboygan did. This is the third time this has been presented to the council. In my opinion, it's presented to the council at this time because of the new aldermen that have been elected in hopes of getting this passed. I believe we're setting a precedent. We don't follow the studies that do come through. I don't know what they're expecting to be different than what all the three different reports that we have gotten. So I am encouraging all of our aldermen to vote against this unless they are also prepared to approve every single department to get a um, department study. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Trester. Uh, like Alderman Holshu said, we voted this down twice. <clears throat> My biggest concern is we are not going to grant the fire department the additional people that they have requested through the study that we've already done. We're going to spend $60,000 on a study and we're not going to pay any attention to what the study is going to bring in. Uh, we've, we have the city attorney's office that we're not meeting their needs because we don't have the money, but we're going to spend $60,000 on something we really don't need and something we've already voted against. We're not going to give the fire department the three people that he needs because we don't have the money, but we're going to spend $60,000 that's not budgeted to be used for another study, which we voted down twice. So I would ask the city council here to think before we vote and to vote against spending this additional $60,000 that we don't have. Thank you. Thank you for that comment. Um, Alderperson Donahue. Um, I speak in favor of this resolution <clears throat> as I have uh, uh, ever since it was first introduced. Um, what Alderman uh, uh, Lewandowski <coughs> says is true. Um, our citizens are happy with the fire department and the reason for that is that when you're in trouble and someone responds to you, in a thorough and competent way, we tend to be happy with that service. I know that when my mom lived with us, we called the fire department quite often, and I love those guys. I think they're terrific. I think they do an excellent job. That's not the issue. Those folks have not been in this council to hear major complaints that have been filed by the working force of the fire department against the management. There are a lot of conflicts in that department that we simply don't find in other departments. I don't know how we're ever gonna resolve that if we don't move forward on this. Um, I mean, I have some ideas, but you know, they're sort of incremental and, and uh, we'll grow old as we, as we wait for those responses. So here's my deal. 
the library has done major reorganization over the past years and has reduced its working staff by almost half. The police department has greatly modified its management structure, made it much leaner and much more <coughs> responsive, allowing more time for uh, uh, police officers to be out on the street. Public Works has gone from 120 down to 80 people, more or less, and has dramatically restructured how its de department works. If you look at the 10-year survey of the fire department, really not much has changed. So what you have is you have a chief, you have an assistant chief, you have a deputy chief, you have four battalion chiefs, you have five captains, and you have 10 lieutenants, and you have 66 firefighters. So that's about one supervisor for every four people. And in today's world, I guess I'm just not sure why that happens. So I would like, and there haven't been any answers from Chief Romus as to why. In fact, I asked him at the city council meeting, I said, or at the committee of the whole meeting, and I said, if you do get, I mean, if you had to choose between getting another firefighter and more management, what do you want? And he said, I need more management. Okay. That may be, but what I believe so strongly is this is really our last chance to kind of try to get this right. Um, none of us here is able to adequately analyze the workings of the fire department. City Administrator Hofflin hasn't run a fire depart department before. We don't seem, one of the reasons this keeps coming up is we can't seem to solve this problem. We just need to take a look at um, we need to take a look at how the fire department does business and see if it's the most efficient and effective way. It costs $54,000. That does sound like a lot of money, but in an overall budget that exceeds $100 million, it's not that much. Here's the deal. If Chief Romus was saying, you know, I can live with what I have, just like the police department does, and public works, and the library, and other departments, I can live with it. Fire Plan 2020 is for a huge budget-busting increase in the size of the fire department. More management, true, more firefighters. My question is, do we need them? Should we have them? Is there a different way of doing business? And according to Chief Romas, everything's just great. And that isn't what I'm hearing, but that's what the chief tells us. I don't see a way forward unless we actually and just get this done. Now, there is a certain cynicism that I know in this crowd, and sometimes I share that myself. I've been here six years, and I'm not sure which studies we have um, undertaken whose recommendations have been ignored. I'm, I'm sure that might be it, if somebody could refresh my recollection on that. I'm willing to live with, you know, within budget constraints with what this study comes up with. But this is our last best chance, because otherwise the only thing we can do to Chief Romas is say, your budget busting proposals, we just can't afford. We, we can't do that. And you're not willing to look at any other way of doing business. And so the plain fact is, Chief, you're not going to get Fire Plan 2020, just like the police department doesn't get it, and the library, and public works, and so on and so forth. So. $54,000, let's get it done, let's take care of it, let's live with what we're told. I'm impressed by the Fitch proposal. I, <laughs> as I say, the reason this does keep coming up is we don't, we're, we just don't seem to be able to solve the problem. So now's the time to do it. I suggest we vote yes on this, get it on its way and get it taken care of. Thank you for those comments. Under further discussion, Alderperson Sorensen. So being one of the newer guys, um, I guess that I am aware that this has been voted down twice before. And I'm wondering if some of the more senior aldermen could give some kind of uh, some background to why they voted it down in the past. You know, was it the, the cost constraints, whether it was the thought that the fire department was doing adequate in the direction that they were heading? Um, you know, because I do feel like that this was brought up you know, as, you know, a way that, oh, there's, you know, a good handful of new folks on here, um, you know, to give it a third shot uh, to say. Um, so I, I would appreciate those, those, those thoughts during our discussion as well. Um, but, I, you know, like I said during the committee of the whole meeting, I'm, 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 I'm skeptical about, you, you know, if, if we get the study complete, are we going to follow through?
through with all the recommendations? Are we going to agree with everything? You know, I'm hopeful. You know, I'm hopeful that with the the, the size of the fire department's budget, that we will find some some good changes. You know, that we can hopefully streamline. Um, you know, whatever we might need to do, that we can save some money. Um, you know, or the study might come back and you, you know might back up what Chief Romas has to say, and you know then Chief Romas can come back and be like, "Hey, eh, told you so." Um, but I, I do feel like that we that we do need to do this uh, and do it correctly. Um, I feel like that there that this could helpfully in the long run. I think this could help the city as well as the fire department. Um, but I, I do want to make sure that we do do it right. So, thank you. Thank you for those comments, Alderperson Holshue. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, we did have a, a, um, a study that went out to all the people, and there was a morale issue between the union and the management. And we also requested there to be a um, <coughs> study of the management done by our HR and our fire chief, and it came back that everything was hunky-dory. So I don't know how that happened, but it did. Um, the, if you look at the, the fire department, it's 66, it used to be 70, so it has been, been decreased over the years. And I I'm, I'm, I'm clearly see there's an ax to grind. I'm not sure why, but there is. What are we going to do when the survey comes back and says exactly what the chief does, wants to have done? We have an industrial park going out on the south side. We also have just annexed land in the town of Wilson. We are going to need ambulance. We are going to need more fire department. And some of the reasons why that surveys, why this survey was shot down is that when the, we asked the union and the fire chief to get together and discuss each of the plans that were brought in, they came back with the fact that if the chief had put in three of the um, battalion chiefs on full time and left one on management, we would get the coverage that we needed to have. That just didn't happen. So I'm not sure what this study is supposed to bring forth when we're not going to do anything with it anyway, because we don't have the money to do anything <clears throat> moving forward with the fire department. So quite frankly, I'm more than annoyed. And I think that we're setting a precedent that we don't trust our um, department heads, we specifically had the job description for the fire chief change to require a master's degree in a different discussion that we had had on this floor. If, and I do not know why we need to have, why we needed to have the fire department study done. Because why did we change the job description if we aren't trusting someone who is an, who's supposed to be an expert in the fire department? So I, I truly am saying that if we are going to be doing this survey, that we should very well expect that every single department, whether they've made cuts or not, get the same study done to see how we can save dollars in the city. Because it seems to me we're just spending dollars trying to get this pushed through. People have an ax to grind with the fire department and the ambulance service. The only department that's bringing money into, this into our budget is the um, ambulance service. And I think the whole problem is they don't like the answer. So let's keep trying to push it through. Thank you for your comments. Alderperson Trester. I don't know about you, but I grew up with a, a saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And the people in the city of Sheboygan don't think our fire department is broke. The city of Sheboygan could be broke if we keep on having $60,000 studies going on when we don't need them. I think that there are people on this council that just have a vendetta for the fire department and no matter what is said, whether this study comes back that we need three new firemen or if the study comes back saying we need seven firemen with the district in the area that we've just taken in, we're not going to add them anyway because as Alderman Donahue said, we don't have the money. So if we don't have the money, we're cutting all these other departments, because we don't have the money, but we're going to spend $60,000 to have a study done that our fire chief and the fire chief together with the union and that the union have already done. I don't know about you, but if I was the head of the department and I was the head of the department for about 25 years of my life, 
if somebody wanted to do a study of my department after I had already had the studies done and we voted on it twice and it was brought up again, I would be totally offended that the people in this council <clears throat> would not trust my judgment and my job. I think we've got to think about this. This is ridiculous that we will spend $60,000 on the whim of a few people on this council because not everybody on this council is for it. We voted it down twice. Now we have a brand new council with new council members who are gonna try it again because we have new people and maybe we can convince them that they need to vote in favor of this. Well, I'm against it and I will vote against it over and over and over again. And as far as I'm concerned, the fire department do a fabulous job. The people in my district say they do a fabulous job. The people in the city say they do a fabulous job, but by all means, let's spend another $60,000 on a fire study. Let's use that $60,000 and give the city attorney what he needs. Let's use that $60,000 and fix some of the potholes in the city. Thank you for those comments. Next is Alderperson Boring. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, I'm in favor of the study and I have been all along. <coughs> and Alderman Sorensen asked a very good question at the last committee of the whole meeting. Some of you were here and some of you weren't here. And Alderman Sorensen, if I, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, asked Chief Romus when he was standing up there at the podium, do you have the ability or the time to do a study of the same metrics that we are going to get from Fitch? And Chief Roma says, no, I don't, we do not have the expertise, nor do we have the time. I've been on the council, this is my 12th year. I've had three fire chiefs, Chief Lewandowski, Chief, Chief Herman, and Chief, now Chief Romas. Uh, what I've observed in these 12 years is that these chiefs were very qualified and for the most part, part did a very, very good job. But it's been steady as she go, don't rock the boat. There have been very, very few changes in the fire department. Uh, the, uh, the study that is going to be done, I'm going into it with, exact, with no preconceptions at all. And the people that don't want this survey, I'm wondering what they're afraid they might find out. We may find out that we don't need as much management and those dollars can be shifted over to higher firefighters that are on the street. Uh, we may find that we need more fi fire departments. We may find out that we need less. We may find out some better ways of billing for the ambulance service. I don't know if you caught it when uh, City Administrator uh, Hoffman gave his report on the budget two weeks ago but he's budgeting for the ambulance service collections to go down another $200,000 in 2018. And that's, I'm not saying it's the fault of the fire department, it's because Medicaid and Medicare are reducing their reimbursements for those calls. What I'm hoping if we go through with the Fitch study that they are gonna come up with some new unique ways of getting more ambulance collections. I, I agree, we, if we're gonna be in that business, we have to maximize the collections. Maybe there's some ways that we haven't thought of. Maybe there's a way for our department to get some of the more lucrative calls that are going down to Milwaukee or up to Green Bay. Maybe we haven't exhausted every way of getting those calls. Uh, and I agree with uh, Alderman Donahue when she said, uh, the other departments have already been through this. I was here, when the last police chief retired. And we changed the deputy chiefs in the police department to, uh, I believe, captains. We also reduced some of the administrative people in the uh, police department and offered them early retirement. And we, we gave some of those duties to clerical people rather than sworn people. The result of that was uh, after some payback for early retirements, was a savings in the police department of $450,000 a year. Uh, and also with the public works department, uh, there have been drastic changes. That department also does a fantastic job, just like, the, just like the fire department and the police department. They have better equipment, they're working smarter, and they have an excellent leader in uh, Director Beeble. Uh, so 
I'm in favor of this. I'm not afraid of what we're going to find out. Apparently, some people are. But the clincher for me was when Alderman Sorensen asked that question, are we quali is our leadership in the fire department qualified, or do they have the time to do the metrics? And Chief Roma said no to each one of those. In and, and talking about the report that we've gotten so far, it sounds like Alderman Holshue has been disappointed. I was talking to another alderman today, and he said if I was writing a report like we got from the fire department, it was a college paper, it would have been graded as an F. So I'm going to support this study. I think it's money well spent, $53,000. We may find that there are savings of a couple hundred thousand dollars that's more than going to pay for this. Uh, so again, I encourage you all to vote for it. And again, I'm not looking at this with any preconceptions. I want an independent study. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Alderperson Lewandowski. Alderman Donahue said that she can live with the results of the study. But since we're talking about public safety here, will everybody be able to to live with the results of the public, with the study. If the study says that we should cut people, is that going to cost somebody their life? That's something that we can't risk. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Alderperson Donahue. Yes. Um, Alderperson Holshue, you buzzed in, but you've already spoken twice to this issue, so I'm sorry I'm going to have to pass you up. Alderperson Reinfleisch. Thank Robert's you, rule of order, sorry. Before I retired, I spent a considerable amount of time doing continuous improvement projects in a manufacturing environment. Um, the old way of thinking was, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. The modern way of thinking was, if it ain't broken, improve it. And that's what we really need to be doing. We have a study here to improve our services. Um, I'm not afraid of having, having a study done. Hopefully this company who has got a lot of experience and I've been reviewing their proposal in detail will be able to find us better ways to, to operate the department. That's not to say it's going to be more resources or fewer resources, but they know, they know the fire business. And I think it's worthwhile for us to get a professional opinion on this. Again, we want to improve the services that we do and that may involve more people, may involve less. We'll find out when we get it, get the study back. But I certainly think it's short-sighted to say because it's not broken we can't do anything any better we certainly can do things better Tulsi Johnson reported again on the ambulance liability on page 38 of their fifth proposal they have experience doing collection from ambulance service so it's directly relevant uh, they have considerable experience collecting an ambulance experience so I think just that little part of this study will be valuable to us so I think we can learn a whole lot from doing the study and I intend to vote aye Thank you for your comments. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm also gonna, looking at this as a no right now. And the reason that I'm, I'm looking at this, and I've been an alder that's been, been on board for the two, two votes, voting it down, is because I've been, I've been on, the, on the fence. And why have I been on the fence? I've been on the fence from the beginning on the, on the, the way we've been presenting it. Um, as it's been said by several elders, or alders, um, elders. Anyway, the, the way it's been been reviewed and presented is fire department, fire department, fire department. Um, my issue is again, like Alderman Ron uh, had said, is the fact that continuous improvement. I agree with continuous improvement. I do see a value to having uh, a consultant come in. The issue is. Why are we doing it? Why are we focusing on, on the fire department? I would have rather it came forward and as m multiple alders believed it was going to be happening is that we were planning on looking at all of our departments. It has never been presented that way as far as that I'm concerned. It's always been the fire department only. A consultant coming in can be looked at in two different ways. They can be looking at when you're underwater trying to figure out how to find your way to the top or to find out how well you are doing when you are swimming. And I guess when I look at this, we, we've heard from some, some alders how well we're doing in all of these other departments, but we feel that the fire department is not doing a very good job. I believe that our population within the fire department has been going down, <coughs> but yet our city has been growing in different directions. 
Um, what do I mean by that? The population hasn't necessarily been changing, but the concentration has been changing within the city. We have five fire stations compared to years ago. Um, do I agree necessarily that we need more management? Not necessarily. Um, do, I, do I agree with the ambulance? I agree that we need an ambulance um, because those firemen are, at the, are gonna be at the station. We send our fire trucks to every call also. So again, some of this is semantics. Some of this is not understanding the spirit of the discussion when we talk about the fire department. I think every department has an opportunity for, for cost improvement. But I also wanna point out the fact that as we've made changes over the years, some of them because of Act 10, some of them just be through, um, through retirements and continuous improvement within the departments. I think we have a great leadership within the city of Sheboygan. Over the years, we have brought in additional um, highly educated, high, highly knowledgeable people within departments. And we've, we've had people that have worked here and continuously improve our departments. But, but we say that those departments are continuously improving, but the fire department is not, and that's why we're focusing on the fire department. It's also because they have a high budget. I would be, more, I would be in support if it was written correctly and it was presented correctly. I would be willing to support every year or every two years a budget where we look at it from the, the largest budget department, let's say it's the fire department, then let's say it's the police, and in publics, Public Works as an example, that every year or two that we would bring a consultant in and do one department every two years and we would just do that on a regular basis. Nobody's being looked at discriminatively. Nobody's being looked at other than how can we improve what's going on. What's happening right now, Mr. Romas has offered us his, his uh, requests in the last couple of years. We didn't like it, we didn't do it, it was put on hold. Then we ask for a report, then the union says we'll get a report from them, so we wait. The union gives us a report, then we get to 2020, and amazing, they're very similar. Um, then we ask for more clarity, we ask for job descriptions and things like that to be reviewed, everything's good. Yes, um, Alderman Donahue is correct. This, the, the constituents don't seem to complain with the, the fire department because it's a life and death situation. Insurance is like fire department. They're costly, but we don't like to use, but we want it when it's there. I understand, it's just like the police. We don't like it, we get nervous when we see them, but we want them there when we need them. It's, it's like that for everything. It's just like you know public works. We get upset when things are not done right, but we want them there. We don't like the cost. What, the reason why I'm against it at this time, again, is because of the way it's being presented and the fact that we're not looking at everything as a broad brush of the, as broad stroke of the brush, we're looking at one department. And if we're gonna look at one department, then we should be looking at all of them because I think that we're, we're being, you know, we're, we're being hindsight here is the fact that we have been reducing our costs for, for years, we have been, allowing our, our management team to, to guide us and show us, but we also haven't been necessarily listening to them. We're starting to listen to people. We're starting to understand that maybe we're a little too tight and that we need to make some changes. Again, I'm voting it down because of the fact that I personally want to see multiple departments reviewed, not just one, not focusing just on one department. We should be looking at multiple departments and meeting with the management team and getting them to understand that this is to help them do their job more openly and have um, the tools that they need to, to, to do their job. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Nelson. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I've been listening to uh, most all of the aldermen have made their comments, uh, and so I guess I have to uh, make a little comment too. I. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I obviously I know nothing about fire departments, but uh, um, it's been an educational experience. I have had access to uh, the reports that uh, that have been done before because I guess I just asked for them and got them. So I mean, it's it's not a big deal. I don't wait to be provided with uh, information. I search out information. The one thing that hasn't been discussed here is the future 
and I'm not talking about 2020, I'm talking about 2030 again or 2035. And uh, what is the future of fire service going to look like? As you may or may not know, um, volunteer fire departments out in the uh, unincorporated areas are withering on the vine. There's uh, less uh, volunteers. There's, there's more training required in the volunteers. Um, so there's a, a, quite a movement towards what they call fire service areas. And that wouldn't be just <coughs> limited to the city limits. And uh, so I'm hoping from a study like this that we're going to uh, learn some, uh, some eco potential economies of scale with a larger service area, more taxpayers involved, because uh, actually the way we do things now, my understanding is um, we help out those volunteer fire departments uh, at a greater proportion than perhaps they help us. So I don't, I don't know, but I'd like to hear some of that information in a, in a study, and I'm hoping that information will be available. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Seeing no other lights lit up, I'll ask the clerk to please call the roll on 9.5. Seven, excuse me, seven eyes, five no's. Motion passes. Next item is uh, 9.6, resolution number 62 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2017 budget for contracted services for an operational consulting and departmental uh, structure of the fire department. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to pass the resolution. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. I have a second. Is there a second? second. I'm sorry, Ron. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, at this time, I would also um, uh, move to put this resolution on hold. Second. Okay, so um, there's a motion on the floor to put the item on hold. Is there I, any discussion? If I could speak to, uh, if I could speak to my motion. Um, okay, it is ahead. my understanding um, that this vote requires a supermajority. In other words, 11 out of 16 people need to vote in favor of it. As there are only 12 of us here tonight, these are, we usually think of majority rule, these kinds of things are minority rule. Um, but the fact that there are only 12 of us here, which means that two people alone can um, undermine a resolution that's been passed by a majority of the of the council indicates to me that we should just hold off on this until more alders are here and and we can take it to, and we can take it from there thank you for those comments alder person holds you thank you mr mayor i'm not in favor of holding this issue we could talk about this survey why can't we talk about the money and make the vote for getting the money for this study. So it's on, this is the second time it's been brought before us. It was held at our last meeting. So I um, am in favor of taking the vote tonight. Thank you for your comments. Alderperson Trester. I too am in favor of going ahead. I don't like manipulating the vote because we don't have enough people here to vote on it. I think if it's brought to us tonight, we ought to vote on it. So I don't want to hold it either. Thank you very much. Uh, Alderperson Donahue. Uh, just in the spirit of civility and so forth, we've been talking about people having personal vendettas and, and, and various things and <coughs> manipulation. I just object to the term if I could. Um, this is an odd statutory provision. Um, the legislature in its wisdom determined that any, any budget transfer no matter how small, this is $54,000 out of an enormous budget, needs to be passed by a supermajority of the council. In other words, it's minority rule. And that's the law. It can't be changed, at least not at this point. Um, my point here is that from a democratic process, because it does require this extra vote, it's not manipulation, it's not a vendetta, it's just a, a fairer way of doing business, is that we, we come when we have more people here 
and see if there are 11 people, in fact, who are in favor of this really quite small expenditure. So I think we kind of keep the, the conversation on the up and up and, and take it from there. Thank you for those comments. Seeing no other lights, ask the clerk to please uh, call a roll for this motion to hold. I'm sorry, oh, the other person holds you? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, if that been the case and we wanted to get the opinion of all the aldermen, why didn't we hold the other document as well? Would be one question and we're certainly not trying to manipulate the vote. Um, I wonder if by holding that, that insinuation that was just made would fall upon those on that and also to, it's cost more than $58,000 because they have to take the fire department's time and they have to have their participation and the reason why the fire chief said he didn't have time to do it he isn't going to have find the time to do it with the survey either so it's more than the 58,000 so again I encourage everyone to vote on this it's on the agenda we could discuss it without the aldermen that aren't here we should be able to vote with them not here as well thank you for that comment now the clerk please call a roll on the motion to hold. <clears throat> I vote is to hold. And I vote would be to hold. <coughs> Eight eyes, four no's. Motion passes. Uh, next item is um, 9.7, RC number 110 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom is referred a copy of General Ordinance number 11 of 1718 by Alderperson Holshu and Schneider, annexing territory to the city of Sheboygan, uh, parentheses acuity. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> the reason we're doing the file is we've already passed this. This was just a copy gone to another committee. Twelve eyes. Motion passes. Item 9.8 is general ordinance number 13 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue, Boren, Wolf, Ryan Fleisch, and Ross, amending section 82-33 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code as to amend a position in the Department of Public Works Engineering Division and the Department of Public Works Table of Organization. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to pass the ordinance. <clears throat> Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Passes. Next, we'll go on to other matters. City Attorney. 10.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2017, June 30, 2018, and June 30, 2019. That'll be referred to the Lawn Licensing Committee. Uh, next is an anticipated closed session. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85 sub, sub 1 sub E uh, Wisconsin stats where competitive and bargaining reasons require the closed session for, the, for a development opportunity in the South Pier District. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The clerk call the roll for closed session. Twelve ayes. Motion passes. For the uh, viewing public, we'll be uh, um, adjourning in, cl in uh, closed session. So this will end our broadcast for this evening. Thank you.